Okay, hello, good morning. Um, I'm here, as you can see, with Kathleen Phelan, and we're going to do a tutorial about ChatGPT4. Um, many things have been said, and many things have been uh, missaid, I suppose, about ChatGPT4. And I would like to clarify um, a few small things uh, in this video. And if it's useful to you, we may do other videos in the future. So you're very welcome, Kathleen. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Frank. OK, uh, now the, the purpose of this particular session is, um, first of all, to allay people's fears. Some people in the right on group and elsewhere um, are afraid of chat GPT. Let's put it. Let's put it bluntly. They are afraid um, that chat GPT will take over the whole writing process and ultimately that we'll all end up writing the same stories or writing the same poems. Now, I, I for one, don't believe that's going to happen, but um, um, I can understand how some people fear that it might. The way I look at ChatGPT is another weapon in a writer's arsenal uh, whereby uh, we can improve our writing or at least get, get, um, get our writing read and looked at by an objective observer. Uh, I look on ChatGPT more or less the same way as I would look on a spell checker or a grammar checker or uh, that sort of thing. So to try and to, to uh, get down to business, if you like, I have created a little uh, test document and the test document contains 200 words. And uh, within the test document, there are errors of punctuation, of grammar, and of spelling. And it's quite typical of the sort of manuscript that we deal with here in uh, in Write On. Uh, I have to say, and I hope Write On members uh, won't take uh, offense, but many people just submit their writing for the first time without even rereading it themselves. Um, it is very important to reread what you write. Because no, none of us, not not one of us, I think anyway, can write a piece of, of text or prose or poetry without making some sort of mistake or wanting to correct something that we've written. So at the first thing, if you were to take nothing else away from this tutorial, take away the idea that you must read the material yourself first before you give it out to somebody else to read. And in that reading, you will find, I hope that you will find that you've made some mistakes and you can correct them before you send it in. So that's that's the first takeaway. Here is the test I created for this right on tutorial. It was an unusually cold evening in Galway as Patrick O'Connor strolled down the cobbled streets. His mind was preoccupied with thoughts of his recent conversation with Sarah. He remembered how she had said, I'm not sure if this is going to work out, but I'm willing to try. You really think we've got the cha a chance, he'd responded. Maybe it's too early to tell, she replied, her eyes not meeting his. As he walked, he couldn't help but think what, what the what ifs. What if things had been different? Could they still be together? The chilly air bit at his skin, but he barely noticed. He was too lost in his thoughts. Suddenly he heard a familiar voice. Patrick, called a voice from behind. It was Tom, his childhood friend, whom he hadn't seen in years. How are you, man? Tom exclaimed, embracing him in a warm hug. I'm all right, you know, just dealing with life, Patrick muttered, forcing a smile. Ah, life, it can be a tricky thing, Tom said, releasing the hug. But you've always been the one to figure things out. They stood there talking about old times and for a moment Patrick forgot about his worries. It was moments like these that reminded him no matter how tough life gets, there's always a silver lining. OK, it sounds it, it sounds like a reasonable enough story, a start to a story or whatever. Now, um, our spell check has helped us enormously here because if I'm sure you're able to see on the shared screen, a number of words have been underlined by the spell check. Unusually is spelled wrong, preoccupied is spelled wrong, remembered is spelled wrong, and so on. Workout has got a blue line, which means uh, should is it grammatically correct or is it spell checked correct? Is it a workout or is it that things might work out? Two separate words. Together is spelled wrong. Thoughts are spelled wrong. He heard is spelled wrong. But those are the obvious ones. Those are the obvious spelling mistakes and perhaps a few more that I haven't highlighted. 
But then there are other mistakes that, again, and I hope no right on member will take offence at this, but they are terribly, terribly common mistakes in the writing that we receive. For example, I'm looking at one here. I'm not sure if this is going to work out, but I'm willing to try. The question is, does the full stop go in after try or does it stay outside the punctuation? Question to be considered. Um, I should make that a little bit bigger. I'm now uh, thinking so that you'll be able to see it a bit clearer. Uh, should that full stop go here or should it be here? Question for you. Now it was there. I'm going to put it back. Uh, down here, uh, just another one. Uh, maybe it's too early to tell. Now, I have said many times and right on, you never, ever, 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 ever leave a piece of uh, speech between quotation marks, whether it's single or double, but you never leave it without punctuation. You need some punctuation after the word tell. Whether it's a question mark, maybe it's too early to tell. Oh, sorry, I put it in the wrong place there, sorry. It could be a question mark, it could be a full stop, or it could be a comma. More often than not, it's a comma, and followed by she replied. But that is, if I was to say, that is probably the most common mistake made by uh, new writers. They forget to put in the punctuation between the quotes. So maybe it's too early to tell. Looks good, looks fine, she replied, but it's not fine. It's actually grammatically incorrect. It needs the punctuation mark, comma, she replied. Okay, uh, if it was a full stop, that is true. If it was a full stop, this would start with a new sentence. She replied, would 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 be, she replied with her eyes. You'd make up a sentence starting with she, uh, capital S, if that was the case, but it's not. It's a comma. And then she replied, comma goes there. But the important takeaway is when you have a quote, somebody is speaking, dialogue, you have to have some form of punctuation be in, in between the quotation marks. All right. Uh, could I just check, Kathleen, is everything all right so far? Kathleen? Oh, your, your sound is off, Kathleen. Sorry, I can't hear what you're saying. Sorry. Sorry, Frank. Yes, yeah. yes that's fine. Uh, everything Please. fine. So far, OK, well, now we're not going to go into too much de more detail about uh, uh, punctuation and all the rest of it. But what we are going to do now is to show you how does chat GPT figure in all this thing. So Frank, can yes, I just Catherine. say something, Frank? Yes, Catherine. At, at the beginning of computers, when we had this big, uh, we just bought it from my daughter. Uh, you know, these big clumpy ones. Yes. And then I started to become, I knew nothing about them. And it took me a couple of years really to get used to them. Yes. But I was write, writing things and uh, I'd be meticulous about the spelling. And my daughter used to say to me, Mommy, don't worry about the spelling because the, it, it, it will be corrected automatically. Yes. So that was my first encounter with, with this. And uh, I found it very interesting. Right. So. Uh, very good, Kathleen. There is a downside to that, though, that a spell checker doesn't know the difference between the word firm, F-I-R-M, or farm, F-A-R-M. So you might have put, typed in, the man went down to milk the cows on his firm, and the spell checker would think that's perfectly fine. Uh, so just, you have to go back and edit it yourself. Then. Oh, you, you still have to read it for sense yeah. yourself. But but I mean that's just an exception to the rule. In general, the spell the spellings that were corrected were needed to be corrected. Okay. Um. Uh. Now with AI with ChatGPT, it 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 will uh pick up the logical farm instead of firm. Uh, it, it's an improvement on the spell checker. So let's look at 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 what uh and how we can set up. Um, chat GPT. The, the important thing, I'm assuming that everybody has experimented with chat GPT and I'm not going to go into the, the rigmarole, if you like, of how you get in and how you log in. I am going straight to the chat GPT page that you will see when you when you um, open up the, the chat GPT thing for yourself. So let me just share my screen now and you will see that 
uh, I'm in the chat GPT program. For those of you who want to find out how to get in, that's a kind of a separate, uh, that's, that's, that's a separate tutorial. Uh, so we're in chat GPT, uh, chat GPT four, as you can see, uh, that's the one that we're using here. You will see that I'd asked chat GPT to create a piece of text with the errors that I'm just after reading for you. So that's where that piece of text came from. Uh, but of course, it could have come from anywhere. So now, supposing um, the chat GPT hadn't produced the text, how would I get my text here that I wanted to edit? Um, the, 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 I would simply go back to my Word program, uh, to my Word document, where, where, which I was reading from with all the spellings marked out, and I would copy, which I'm doing now off the screen, and I don't think you can see it. I can copy. Uh, save that and close it. Now I've copied what I read and now I'm pasting it down. So there it is pasted in the piece that I read, test for right on tutorial. It was an unusually cold evening in Galway as Patrick O'Connor strolled out. Now I have not given any instruction to chat GPT and, uh, <laughs> or, uh, and maybe that's why it, it failed. I, I shouldn't have pressed return there, mistake. Um, I'll edit that out of the finished video, hopefully. Uh, I just want to start again. Uh, ignore, ignore this message for now. See, so can I get it to stop? And we can take it up again. Or maybe it's gone on ahead. Okay, it started to do the work that I wanted to do. I just wanted to ignore this message for now. Uh, wait until I say start editing. Okay, so I've asked it just to wait until I say start editing. Understood, Frank, I'll wait for your signal to start editing. So there you see, I made a, a slight mistake by putting the text in and I wasn't ready for it. And I just stopped it and I said, wait a minute until you're ready. And uh, luckily, ChatGPT is better trained than my dog and will wait when told, not like the, the, the most who might uh, run off and so on. Anyway, coming back to the real business here, what uh, there is no point in just uh, putting in the text, sending it down there without telling ChatGPT what it is you want to do. So this is the, the probably the most important takeaway from this um, from this tutorial is ChatGPT is only as good as the prompt that you give it. ChatGPT is only as good as the prompt that you give it. The very first thing I usually do when I'm dealing with ChatGPT is I empower it to be as good or not better than myself. So I say, I speak to it like you would speak to a human. You are an expert editor. That's the first thing I say to it. You are an expert editor. I'm talking here to ChatGPT. I, if I wanted to get medical advice about a pain in my toe, I would say, you are an expert doctor. If I wanted to get uh, advice about how to play the guitar, I'd say, you are an expert guitar player or guitar teacher. So you see, you can in make ChatGPT an expert in the field that you're interested in. You are an expert editor. You are... Uh, experienced at proofreading. You are experienced at proofreading. Now, proofreading, for those of you who don't know the difference between some of the publishing terms, proofreading essentially means correcting mistakes, correcting spelling, grammar, uh, and so on mistakes. Copy editing is a different thing. It's a different skill. Copy editing is where you read the text for sense and to see if it makes sense. And a copy editor will often suggest a new way of saying things or a new way of, of maybe a better way of phrasing a sentence. Whereas a proofreader will simply hone in on mistakes. So what we want for this tutorial is nothing but a proofreader. Now I um, 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 made up a prompt, which I sent to the Write On members on WhatsApp and I've copied it here. And rather than um, 
rather than try and invent it all while we're on this um, recording, I copied it out. It's like, I'm like a kook. Here's one that I made earlier. And this is my prompt that I propose to use here now. I'm going to paste it in. Uh, you're, the, you're an experienced proof, proofreader. Now I say, I have a document that needs a thorough proofreading for spelling, grammar, punctuation, and syntax. The key requirement is to strictly correct these aspects without venturing into copy editing. It's important to maintain the original text as, as is, with changes limited only to necessary corrections in these areas. Please do not make alterations to the style, the structure, or content of the document. Your role should be solely as a proofreader, ensuring the text is error-free while keeping its original tone and intent intact. Now, I'm going to add one other thing. Sorry, I hope that's self-explanatory. I've just said to it, uh, correct the mistakes, but don't go changing the language. Don't make it easier or harder. Don't put in flowery phrases. Do not change it in any way. Keep the essential document the same, except ch check the spellings. Now, I, elsewhere, and it's uh, for a more advanced tutorial, you can also tell it that you want European spellings, not USA spellings. And you can also tell it that you want single quotes, not double quotes. So just to make it clear, use single quotes, not double quotes. Use European spelling, uh, not US spelling. Um, uh, what was the other thing? And that's it, I think. Uh, uh, um, uh, I just leave it at that. Okay, so now that is, uh, yeah. Um, now I'm going to say again, please tell me you understand before I give you the text to edit before I before I give you right so I just want to make sure that it understands what we're talking about send message before it gets the text so it says I understand Frank as an expert editor focused on proofreading I will strictly correct spelling grammar punctuation and syntax errors in the document you provide my edits will be limited to necessary corrections in these areas, ensuring the original style, structure, and content of the document remain unchanged. I'll use single quotes for dialogue and adhere to European spelling conventions. Please go ahead now and provide the text that you'd like me to proofread. Well, did you ever get such a, a, a helpful editor in all your living days? So I will go now to the test for punctuation in my Word document again. And I'm going to cut and paste it. I'm going to cut it first of all, test. And I'm going to copy it. I'm doing that off screen. And now I have it copied and I'm just going to send it in. And before I type it, I got to say, here is the document for editing, for proofreading. Hold on. And here I shall stick the document here, paste. Right, and we're ready to go. That's the document we started out with. So let's see what happens next. Send message. And the message is sent. So here, within an instant, it starts. Here is the document, proofread for spelling, grammar, punctuation, and syntax. And what I'll do, rather than try to read it off this screen, when it is finished, I will uh, copy it from here, put it on a Word document, throw it up and and see what sort of result have we got and see did it follow the instructions as as we said now for those of you who are worried that the machine is going to change your writing completely and that we're all going to end up writing the same stuff uh this should allay your fears at least i hope it will uh copy so now what i've done is i've copied that i'm just going to to shut out of this window uh or stop sharing and I'm going to open a Word document. Well, let's just open this one. And I'm going to uh, insert, just a minute now, insert a page break so I can start on a fresh page. There we go. And I'm going to paste down what we're just after seeing from ChatGPT. And I'm not going to bother doing any uh, other thing with it until I share this with you now. 
Okay, so this is what we're after getting back. Let's have a look at it. Test for, uh, let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Oh, hold on, make the screen a bit bigger. Can you see that all right, Kathleen? Yeah, okay, I can make it a little bit, well, there is big enough. Now, let's see what's happened here. It was an unusually cold evening. You'll remember up here, unusually was spelled incorrectly. It has changed that. And the next spelling is preoccupied and the next one was remembered. So let's see. Uh, it was an unusually cold evening in Galway as Patrick O'Connor strolled down the cobbled streets. His mind was preoccupied, spelled correctly, with thoughts of his recent conversation with Sarah. He remembered, spelled correctly, how she had said, single opening quote here, look, single quote, not double. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm willing to try. And the, 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 that punctuation is absolutely correct here. I can explain that in, in detail again. Do you really think we've got a chance? Question mark. Uh, quote, quote, the quotation is in the right place. He responded, maybe it's too early to tell with the comma inside. Let me just look back up here. Maybe it's too, maybe it's too early to tell. Oh, uh, we had double quotes and we had uh, the comma there. All right, sorry, I thought maybe we didn't have. Uh, Maybe it's too early to tell, she replied, her eyes not meeting his. As he walked, he couldn't help but think about the what ifs. What if things had been different? Would they still be together? The chilly air bit at his skin, but he barely noticed. He was too lost in his thoughts. Suddenly, he, comma, he heard a familiar voice. Patrick, with single quotes, called a voice from behind. It was Tom, his childhood friend whom he hadn't seen in years. How are you, man? Question mark. Tom exclaimed, embracing him in a warm, warm hug. I'm all right, you know, just dealing with life, Patrick muttered, forcing a, a smile. Now, just going back here again. Uh, I'm all right, you know, just dealing with uh, every. Oh, here, this one. Ah, life, it can be a tricky thing. There was no punctuation here. Do you remember? Ah, life, it can be a tricky thing. So let's go and watch what happened here. Ah, life, it can be a tricky thing. The comma has been put in properly. Comma, Tom said, releasing the hug. But you've always been the one to figure things out. They stood there talking about old times that for a moment Patrick forgot about his worries. It was moments like these that reminded him no matter how tough life gets, there's always a silver lining. So if I may say so, a perfectly edited piece of text with all the spellings corrected, with the quotation marks in properly and not a mistake in sight um, and, and done in an instant. And that is really the whole purpose of this tutorial to show you how to do it. Um, the important thing to remember is, number one, when you write something, read it yourself first. Forget about chat, GPT and everything else. Read it back out loud, preferably to yourself first. Spot your own mistakes. The second thing is, if you are going to use chat GPT as an editor, you must tell us that's what you want to do. You tell us you are an expert editor. Now, do you want the editor to change your sentences around, to improve them, to make better words, to make better sentences? No, not necessarily. You want your own words to exist. So you tell it, I just, I'm just looking for a proofreader, somebody to correct the mistakes. But you have to tell it that. So you tell it you are a proofreader. I have given you uh, the prompt that I made out, but you can make your own prompt or adjust my prompt. That's what you do. If if uh, I can give you an example, if you wish, uh, to show you how the whole text could be changed with a different prompt. Do you think that would be worthwhile, Kathleen, or do you think that's overkill? Kathleen, uh, you need to let off your mic, Kathleen. Sorry. Kathleen? Yeah, I think it would be a worthwhile exercise, but I just want to say that I've learned so much, Frank. Yeah. I, I thought I had become almost expert at this. I yeah. didn't realize you had to put in so many prompts. I'm delighted to know that. Well, Kathleen, the fact of the matter is you don't have to put in so many prompts. If, if, if what you do is what you do, though, is you learn how to streamline your prompts to get exactly what yeah. you want. To get the best no, results. To get the I, best results. I had no idea about that, so I'm very grateful to know that. That's all right. There's a very interesting experiment, again, kind of going off topic a bit. But um, a lad asked, asked um, uh, Dali, the, the art programme, to draw a picture of London without any lampposts. And when he got the picture back, 
what was it? It was full of lampposts. There was lampposts hanging from the sky. There was lampposts, everything. And he said, "Why? Well, I asked it for no lampposts. But uh, Dali and ChatGPT don't do negatives very well. If you were to say to Dali, uh, do not use uh, uh, do not use any images of rabbits. You'd get you'd get a picture and it's full of rabbits because once it sees the words rabbits, it says, well, I have to show it somewhere. Maybe so, it's yeah. reverse psychology. Frank. It's reverse psychology. It's, it's <laughs> l like a small child. Exactly. You could say, don't yeah. you dare go out. In the exactly. Rain. That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> so anyway, to, to follow up on what we were saying, let's let's now change the prompt, use the same text, and we'll change the prompt. So I'm going to sh uh, go back now to chat GPT uh, 4. Uh, I should have probably said that uh, I'm using the chat GPT 4, which is the paid version, by the way, whether that uh, it might make a difference. I find myself the chat GPT 3 is useless by comparison with chat GPT 4. So uh, if I would suggest that people who want to do the thing properly should get the most up to date version, which is chat GPT 4 at the moment. Uh, there's lots of rumors about chat GTP five <laughs> coming out. OK, now, look, we're going to take the same piece, the, the same piece. But this time we're going to change the prompt. Um, OK, I, and again, I like to be polite with everybody, including computers. So I say, OK, uh, thank you very much for that. It was brilliant. And by the way, I'm not doing this just to be uh, uh, smart, smart, but the machine or the computer is learning all the time. And these comments go back into its memory and it realizes that it has done something that I wanted it to do and it has done it properly and it learns for the next time. So it's not just uh, being plum also. Uh, it actually helps because I, again, in a later tutorial, I'll show you that I have a profile that is with ChatGTP. It knows who it's talking to. Uh, it knows where I live. It knows how I write. It knows uh, the sort of things I write. Maybe I should just show 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 you that. Uh, tell me what you know about me. Okay. What? You're Frank. When, when, the, when the robots are developed, they'll be out to get you to have your address. <laughs> but look at this. I'll just read the first paragraph. You're Frank Fahey, residing on the west coast of Ireland. You work as an editor, a writer, editor, and publisher. Is it's notably centered around educational books for primary and post-primary school students. You also publish your own book of poetry titled Building New Bridges and a collection of short stories called The Father's Love and Other Stories. And then it goes on, chairperson of the Right On Group, engage in weekly activities, including a newsletter, hosting Zoom sessions. Every September, we produce an anthology. Uh, you write short stories. I'm writing a novel, Addiction to Murder. You're looking forward to utilizing ChatGPT4 to help. Uh, I have created a style called FF Style 1, which means that I use the Oxford uh, UK English style, simple dialogue tags like he said or she said, and a focus on realistic, natural dialogue without over elaboration. So it already knows that that's my style, that's what I want, uh, because I have put it into the into the memory of ChatGPT before. Um, and that is uh, useful to know. It's a separate, it's very simple to do, but it's a separate, I don't want to confuse the issue. So let, let us, let us uh, go back now to what we were planning to do. Um, let me go back to what I was planning to do. I'm just going to probably edit and cut the recording here. I just want to gather my thoughts. Uh, okay. All right. Right. Um, now, we, 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 have, we have done that experiment and we've seen how the proofreading chat GPT can correct errors in, in spelling, punctuation and grammar. Now, what I want to do just for demonstration purposes is supposing we had given it a different prompt. So um, uh, you are an expert uh, copy editor editor uh, and writer, we'll say, and writer. You have published many uh, books of fiction. Uh, uh, you have a very ornate writing 
style you like using metaphors and similes and very flowery language this is just to make you up thing now um uh, very flowing you have Oh, flowing, flowery. It's a very good flower. F, uh, I forget if it's a flower. F L O W, flowering language. Okay. Uh, please rewrite this text uh, uh, in, uh, in the style of, in the style of, a, a, let's say, John Banville, maybe. John Vanville, or let's think of somebody else, uh, or Column Tobin, maybe. I think that's how you spell Tobin, Column Tobin. Uh, uh, using, no, Column Tobin doesn't use, in this, uh, uh, using very ornate language. Okay, so and uh, now we'll just present the same piece again. Uh, test for punctuation. And I'm going to copy the same piece again. And let's see what we get this time. A proofread for, oh, sorry, that's the wrong. Uh, sorry, I want to put the one with the mistakes, the, the original one. That's what I want to put here. So this is the original one copy. It has all those spelling mistakes and everything in it. Um, so we're going to paste it here now again. And let's see what result we get this time. This is really to demonstrate how important the prompt is. So here we go. Uh, you're an, an, uh, certainly here's an imagined verse, a reimagined version of your text, styled in an ornate manner, reminiscent of John Banville's writing. On a particularly frigid evening in Galway, Patrick O'Connor meandered through the labyrinth cobbled streets, a solitary figure under the whispering canopy of twilight. His mind, a restless sea, was awash with the echoes of a recent dialogue with Sarah, their words twinning and untwinning like treads in the loom of memory. He recalled with a pang of longing her hesitant voice, a tremulous melody. I'm not certain this journey, I'm not certain this journey we've embarked upon will reach its desired heaven, yet my heart inclines towards endeavour. Do you harbour belief in the possibility of our souls entwining in harmony? He had queried, a note of vulnerability in his voice. Perhaps she had responded, her gaze an evasive dance. The sands of time have yet to reveal our destiny. I don't think I need to read on, but the rest is there if you need to read on. Now, that is a perfect example of the wrong prompt being given to chat GPT to 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 get the wrong result so again the importance and the whole point of this tutorial is pay attention to the prompt that you give to chat gpt you will get the results that you ask for in the prompt so if it's a simple thing you simply want your spellings corrected and leave my words alone we've done that in this tutorial so without laboring the point, I think that brings us to the end. Uh, Kathleen, have you any questions or comments before we stop recording? No, I just want to say John Banville will never forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> but I have learned an awful lot, Frank, and thank you very much. Now, I will need to go and look at the video again and again. But I have really learned a huge amount. That's... So thank you. That's great to know. Listen, everybody, the video will be available on our website. It'll be up on YouTube and you can watch it at any stage. Uh, thank you, Kathleen. Thanks, everybody. I'm just going to stop the recording now.